Hello and welcome back to the Lightworks Dialogue Tutorial Part 4. We hope all is going well and you feel that your skills are growing, operating and editing with Lightworks. OK, let's assemble our three finished edits into a master sequence. Clear the viewers, make a new edit. I'm going to rename my edit by clicking on the edit's name and call it Coffee Scene. Press Enter. From the Content Manager, I'm now going to double click on Edit 1 in the Filters Edit section and open up Edit 1. If I click on the Show Timeline button, there's all the tracks of the work we've done so far. So all we need to do now is treat this like source material. And notice we've got our title and our picture on V1 and V2. We've got two video tracks here. But all I'm going to do is send in this edited source just splice it in with the insert button. In it goes, and Lightworks will automatically generate the second video track for you. I'm just going to make that track a bit smaller by right clicking at the bottom of V1 and holding with the mouse and just moving that up again. This is how you change track size if you need to. It could be useful if you want to see the audio waveforms even bigger. But that's great. So edits one has been spliced in. I'm going to eject Edit 1 from this viewer and leave the viewer in place by pressing the pop out tile button. I'm now going to pick up Edit 2 and drag and drop it in. Of course you can just close the viewer and double click on a new edit if you want to reopen it. But this is a nice way to keep things tidy. There's Edit 2. Let's check the timeline. Click the Show Timeline button. That's fine. Now if I insert this now, Lightworks is going to put V1 on the source edit and map it to V1 on the target edit. So if I press the insert button, I've now got my picture on the track above. I don't want that. I want it to continue all the way on the same track as the first edit. So let's just undo that. This time, I'm now going to turn off V1 so it's not included in that edit calculation. Press the insert button on the source edit material. In that goes. And I'm being warned by Lightworks, but I could have just thrown video one out of sync, but I know that there's nothing up here. So I'm just gonna ignore those warnings by pressing the shift and clicking them to clear that. Finally, let's eject edit two and pick up edit three Make sure that we're at the top. Let's have a quick look again at the timeline. Now edit three has the audio we added for the ringtone down at the bottom. We will need to add an extra track on our master edit to encompass this. So right click on the timeline, choose add tracks. And we're gonna add one extra audio track, add. Again, I need to turn off V1 to make sure that all my picture stays on V2 and just hit the insert button. We get our sync warnings up again, but we don't have to worry about them. So shift click them to clear them. All tracks back on. But if I just undo that, have a look at this. We can also drag and drop tiles directly from the content manager into the edit viewer. If I turn off V1, pick up edit three, and drop it, it'll be inserted into the master edit. And again, we just need to clear those sync warnings with shift and click. So you can drag and drop as well. And do check out the drag and drop tutorial videos on the website. Okay, a couple more things left to do and we're done. I want to add some music to this section here underneath the title. So let's zoom in. And go back to our extra media folder and pick up the music. The music's going to come in just as the title does. So I'm going to step back. I'm going to mark an in point. And I want it to finish just a little bit into the dialogue here. So that's our mark part region. I'm going to turn off all of my tracks apart from A3 at the bottom. I'm going to press the replace button. Now the music will go in there. All tracks back on. And let's just check the level of the music. What was she 
Not too bad. I'd like to turn it down just a fraction though. To the advanced panel on the timeline, park over the music, and we just take that down. I'm going to type minus three. That's the music done for the title. The next thing I want to do is add this atmosphere track, which is just people talking in the background of the cafe, to another audio track. Right click the timeline, add tracks, an audio track, press add. Turn off all tracks apart from A4. Go all the way to the top of your sequence. And we're going to mark an in point at the top, scrubbing in the timecode track all the way to the end. That's going to be our marked range, entire duration. Press the replace button on the room Atmos file, and that'll send that in. So we'll just check the levels of the atmosphere track compared to our dialogue. And to mix the level of this entire track, I'm going to use the audio mixer. Open the audio mixer by right clicking on the edit monitor, choose audio mixer panel, and we're looking at the channel A4 for our levels. So let's press play and see how they're balanced. Oh, it's really important. A bit too loud. Such a Turn it down. Interesting role, good part and everything. Yeah, but you know how this business works. The part probably we went to some telephone as bimbo that will make a fool of ourselves. <laughs> so around minus 12 works for me there. So remember, the audio mixer controls the entire track level, whereas the advanced panel controls the levels of individual clips. Now to keep things clear, if you want to, you can rename the tracks. If you right click on the track header, choose rename. Let's call this Atmos. Let's call this SFX, sound effects. And we can call one of these audio tracks vocal for the dialogue. We could even put in up there on V1, rename that GFX for the graphics. Finally, I'm going to do some fade ins. I'm going to fade in the picture and sound at the top of the edit. And to do that, all we need to do is right click at the very top of V2. So you see the transition entry. I'm going to add a 30 frame fade in, add dissolve, and that will fade in the picture just to where she starts talking here. All these effects will be in real time, so you won't have to render them. Now I'm also going to add a fade on my atmosphere track. So go to the top left hand corner of your Atmos file, right click and hold, and drag to the right. You can add a volume ramp really easily. I'm going to do the same to each of my vocal channels. It's a right click and hold at the top left hand corner. So now, Instead of messing around with keyframes, we've just put in those nice smooth volume ramps. Let's nip down to the end and do a fade out in the same way. Right click. And the position of this one is going to be finishing here. To this point, a 30 frame fade, add a dissolve. That will fade out. Now we're going to use our volume ramp technique right click on the top right hand corner hold and drag left on each of the audio channels right click and hold great now let's have a look at the title section i'm going to add a 15 frame dissolve on our title right click 15 frame dissolve from this cut point That's going to fade in the title and we'll fade out the title at the end. Right click, right down at the end there, choose positioning two here, dissolve and that'll fade off the title. I just want to set a volume ramp on the music as it comes out here. Press play. <laughs> and that will fade out from about here. 
So top right hand corner, right mouse click, drag to the left. And we'll fade away that audio as we come back into the dialogue. You know, yeah. Actually, I think I'd like to extend that a bit further. So I'm going to hold down my Alt key. I'm going to click on the end. And I'm going to drag to the right on the music fading out right over there. I'm going to go back in and just hover over the top left of my volume ramp, right click and set that volume fade a bit longer. You know, Okay, great, that's all done. Let's get this exported. When you're ready to export, simply right click on the Edit Viewer or Timeline, choose Export, and choose your preferred delivery. I'm going to send my edit out to Vimeo. And the export panel opens. Now, as a free user, you get 1080p upload to Vimeo. For YouTube, it's just 720p. But do make a Vimeo account and get your work uploaded there for everyone to see in 1080p resolution. If you've got a pro license, you can go way beyond that to 1440 or Ultra HD 2160p. And of course, if you do have a pro license, and we would encourage you to upgrade to get all the extra benefits that offers, you'll get all of the export profiles available in Lightworks today. So I'm good with that. I'm going to quickly hit login. My Vimeo login comes up. Just allow me to log in. You're all good. Once that's set up, we're done. I'm going to hit start. So now my file's been rendered and we're at the upload in progress stage. Up it goes to Vimeo. And there it is on the Vimeo website, ready for everyone to enjoy. Lightworks is originally designed to work with the Lightworks console. So have a look in the shop at the different control surfaces we offer. We have the fully blown weighted Lightworks console. There's also the Contour Jog Shuttle available for those on a budget. Both excellent devices to speed up your editing. And also you've got the coloured keyboard. If you want to use keyboard shortcuts to drive your editing, that's fine. You're going to accelerate your workflow with any of those surfaces. So we hope that's helpful. We wish you happy editing with Lightworks. Thanks for watching.